Hello, and I want to say that I wanted to do another video explaining the connection to the gospel, because people are always saying, what does repentance have to do with the gospel? What does confessing both in prayer have to do with the gospel? And what does call upon the name of the Lord have to do with the gospel? It's only about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. Now, first thing I want to start out with is true salvation. What is true salvation? People say it's faith alone, you're saved by your faith. Well, let's look at that. Acts 15, 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So you're not saved by your faith, you're saved by God's grace. Through the grace of the Lord, God's grace. Ephesians 2 8 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast now true salvation is God saving you God's grace finding God's grace and God saving you that's true salvation people say I, I've always taught that repentance doesn't save you belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross doesn't save you confessing both in prayer doesn't save you and calling upon the name of the Lord is where you find God's grace and he says he's the one that chooses whether to save you or not he's the one that looks at your heart and says your repentance in your heart or in your head is your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross in your heart or in your head are you confessing just to put on a show? Are you truly calling upon the name of the Lord? So, I might get kicked for this, but I believe when I've done my study of what true salvation is, that salvation is the same in every dispensation. And please hear me out. Every dispensation, God is the one that saves you. It's God's grace that saves everyone in every dispensation. Now, knowing this, God's grace is dispensed differently. In other words, the directions on how to find God's grace is different in different dispensations. Okay? The three ways that you find God's grace throughout the Bible is one, through faith, which is today. Uh, and other dispensations, it was faith, through faith, that you find God's grace. Um, faith and works, which is not for today. It will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, and then you find God's grace through works, the millennial kingdom. But God's grace is always what saves. True salvation is God saving you, God's grace. So understanding that, people always ask, what does the gospel have to do with any of this stuff on the outside? All of this stuff is linked to the gospel. Okay? What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory that what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. You guys get a hold of that, we'll talk about it later, believing in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, okay, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, That is the true gospel. Jesus dying on the cross to pay for your sins. Okay? His blood that was shed is God's blood. He died and rose again three days later, three days later proving that he is God. Now, repentance. What does repentance have to do with the gospel? 2 Corinthians 7.10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Easy believism people hate this verse. Why? Because it says repentance comes before true salvation, before God saving you, God's grace. 
Okay. In other words, it's part of the directions on finding God's grace. It happens before you get saved. God saves you. Matthew 9.13, Mark 2.17, Luke 5.32. We're going to do Mark 2.17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? Jesus died for sinners. Okay? What does this have to do with repentance? Well, if you don't believe that you're a sinner and have sorrow in your heart for sinning against God, Acts 20.21 20, testify both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15.3. Okay, we go back to the gospel. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. If you do not repent, come before Jesus as a sinner. In your heart, admitting that you're a sinner, but the number one thing is sorrow for sinning against God. That's true biblical repentance. When you have sorrow for sinning against God, that happens in your heart. When you just admit you're a sinner and you have no sorrow, that happens in the head. It's your heart that God looks at and decides to save you. Is this happening in your heart? How is it linked to the gospel? Why did Jesus die? He died for sinners. Not righteous people who say, I'm going to skip repentance and just say, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I'm not going to believe in my heart that I'm a sinner. I'm not going to have sorrow in my heart for sinning against God. That's works-based. No. Your belief, and we'll get to that, in the gospel is in your head and not in your heart if you don't repent. Okay. Now, Your belief is in vain, but we'll get to that point. I was just reading my notes. Your belief is in vain if you don't repent. Okay? It talks about how your belief can be in vain. Why? Because you're supposed to have it in your heart, not your head. You can have it in your head, but you're not supposed to have it just in your head. It's supposed to make it down to your heart. And it won't make it down to your heart if you skip repentance. Now, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Let's go to Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. You have to believe that Jesus Christ, that died on the cross, is God. God the Father, and people will attack this. There's only one God, capital G God, the Father. Okay? You have to believe that it was God the Father's blood that was shed on the cross. You don't do this, then you're believing in the wrong Jesus Christ. You're believing in an antichrist, Satan, posing as Jesus. John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, God the Father, ye shall die in your sins. you got to believe Jesus Christ is God the Father, because if he's not God the Father, then he's not God, period. There's only one capital G, God the Father. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Get a hold of that. The belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ comes before salvation? Finding God's grace and God saving you? Yeah. People say, I'm saved by my faith in the, in the gospel. I'm saved by my faith in the gospel. No, you're not. It leads to salvation. Okay? We'll get to the Ephesians, I think we talked about Ephesians 2.8, where you are saved by God's grace through faith. It takes faith to repent, 
It takes faith to, in your heart to admit that you're sinning against a God that you cannot see. And having sorrow for that sin, sinning against a God you cannot see, that's faith. No matter what anybody tells you, it takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, Romans 10.10, 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. This goes with Romans 1.16. You're telling me um, that man doesn't believe unto salvation? Yes, but believing doesn't save you. It says, For with the heart man believed believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Your belief is part of the directions that God gives us to find His grace. All right. Next we have confession, repentance, and belief. So belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, everybody say, yeah, that connects to the gospel pretty easy. Repentance connects to the gospel because Jesus died for sinners. If you don't believe you're a sinner, then you're not truly believing the gospel. It's as simple as that. It's in your head and it'll never make it to your heart until you repent. And remember, we just read from Romans 1.16 that belief comes before salvation. You are not saved by your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It leads to God's grace. Confession, repentance, and belief. When you confess both your repentance and belief, what does that have to do with the gospel? Okay, uh, Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are to confess to the Lord your belief in the gospel, and your repentance saying I'm a sinner and I believe because I'm a sinner that Jesus died for me. Okay, Everybody says that Jesus died for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And they say Jesus died for everybody that whosoever believeth in him. Jesus died for those who would believe in him. He didn't die for everyone. If you reject Jesus Christ, because if he died for everyone then everyone's saved and going to heaven. I had a woman tell me that before, that if I believe in a God that will choose to save and choose not to save, uh, then that's not the God I worship. And I agree, she worships a lowercase g God. God, you've got to come to Him as a broken sinner. With broken means having sorrow for sinning against God. And that correlates the, with the fact that Jesus died for you, for sinners. If you believe you're a sinner and have sorrow for sinning in your God, are sinning against God, then you can truly believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. You skip repentance, your belief in the gospel is vain. We read that before. But here's the kicker. Uh, Romans 10, 11, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. People who take confession confessing both repentance and belief out of the directions to find God's grace, they're ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed of the Lord. They're ashamed of repentance, belief. They're ashamed. The Bible says it. You have to confess both repentance and the, your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ before God. How does that have to do with the gospel? You're, conf you're confessing you're a sinner, and you need Jesus Christ because he died for sinners. And you believe that he died for you because you are a sinner. Now, people always say calling upon the name of the Lord. What does that have to do with the gospel? Well, here's the thing. Let's read Acts 2.21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does calling on the name of the Lord have to do with the gospel? Well, let's see. First, I was told that when you call upon the name of the Lord, that it's no longer a gift. The desperation of the easy believism, faith alone, faith alone, they're just totally twisting everything. 
I can ask for something and if someone gives it to me, it's still a gift. Why? Because I did not earn it. I did not trade something for it. It was a gift. I needed it. Someone saw me in need and they gave me that gift. Jesus looks at the world, God looks at the world, and they desperately need help. They need Jesus. They need a Savior. They need a way into heaven. And he provides it. And we are told to call upon his name. God save me. What does this have to do with the gospel? When you call upon the Lord and say, God save me, then you're truly believing the gospel in your heart. You're calling upon a name. It takes faith to call upon a God that you believe can save you. He provided a way, the gospel, a way to save you, to find God's grace. That's why you call upon the name of the Lord, and that's why it's linked to the gospel, because you believe, truly believe in the gospel with your heart and not your head. You believe in a God that died on the cross and provided a way for you to find God's grace and get saved by God. People are always saying it, the gospel, the gospel. Why are these things, why people, it's just the gospel, it's just the gospel. Everything links up to the gospel, and the gospel links to God's grace. All this links to God's grace. God's the one who saves. Okay. Now, you believe all this and you follow the instructions. I already did a video called How to Find God's Grace. You have repentance that leads to belief. Repentance happens in your heart, and because it happens in your heart, if you're just saying, I'm a sinner, you're, not, you're just stating a fact. That happens in the head. Having sorrow in your heart is the key in repentance because that sorrow makes sure that your repentance happens in your heart and not your head. You cannot truly fit, believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ in your heart if you skip repentance. It'll only be in your head. And when we read see Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It goes back to when you confess repentance and prayer, you're not supposed to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth unto salvation. It comes before salvation. All right. This won't happen in the heart if you skip repentance. You are to repent, fall on your knees, tell the Lord, God, I am so sorry for sinning against you. I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinner. I'm on my way to hell, Lord. My life is a mess. I can't do anything to earn heaven, Lord. I am so sorry. Please, please, is there a way that you can save me? And that's when you go to the cross. And they link together because you admitted you're a sinner. And who did Jesus die for? Sinners. Right? That's when the belief is going to happen in your heart. It takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe the gospel. It takes faith to confess, and that goes to the next part. You're to confess before the Lord to prove that you're not ashamed. You're not ashamed of repentance. You're not ashamed of the cross, the gospel, and the fact that you believe in it. You skip this, then you're showing that you are ashamed of the gospel. You are ashamed of repentance, having sorrow for sinning against God. You should never be ashamed of having sorrow in your heart for sinning against God. Now, all this connects to the gospel.